What has the fight against terrorism looked like in the 15 years since 9-11? Joining us right now, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes, Republican from California. Mr. Chairman, thanks for being here. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Brett. Your assessment of where we are in fighting terrorists and perhaps how the threat has evolved. Well, we, uh, we currently face, and I keep having to say this, uh, the largest terrorist threat level that we've ever been since 9-11. The so largest? The largest, and it keeps growing. Um, day by day it grows because more and more numbers get added to the ranks of ISIS and Al-Qaeda. So you know, Al-Qaeda essentially split. Part of them became ISIS. They be for now, they're the most popular, so they're adding uh, their uh, folks. And as you know, uh, they've created a brand that uh, that young people are attracted to uh, here in the United States. So you have the radicalization of the internet that's that continues to add followers, which has led to attacks here in, in the homeland. Uh, but I'm really worried about uh, the refugee flow from North Africa and from Syria and Iraq into Europe. Uh, I think there are thousands and thousands of people we don't know about uh, there that are, our allies have a, a real problem on their hands. Well, on that front, I mean, what about the Syrian refugees coming to the U.S.? And, you know, Donald Trump, the Republican nominee, says that's a concern as well. Yeah, and the House of Representatives uh, overwhelmingly agrees with that. Uh, and we passed legislation to, to stop the refugee program until we could get it certified by the FBI director and our intelligence agencies. Uh, but the Senate... That's a weakness. It, it, it's for sure a weakness because you can't vet the people uh, that are coming in very well. I mean, if someone shows up... Up with no documents, uh, and you don't know, you know, you know, how do you how do you ultimately find those, you know, discover who those people are? I know they they try to go, and and I think we do a pretty good job at trying to vet. Um, but what I've said, and I think the Congress has, has spoken clearly, at least Republicans in Congress have said, we just need to stop it right now and halt it because there's, there's too much going on globally. globally. The world is on fire um, from Morocco to the Philippines. We've been trying to get a, a handle on this terrorist threat and what it kind of looks like uh, with intelligence. Um, this is the National Security Advisor then, after the Osama bin Laden raid, talking about what came out of that. Tom Donlan. It's the largest cache of intelligence information gotten from a senior terrorist that we know of. It's the size of a small college library. Uh, it'll need to be translated, it'll need to be assessed, it'll need to be reviewed. It really is a treasure trove of intelligence. A treasure trove, but in August of last year, uh, the Weekly Standard wrote, the Obama administration does not want the bin Laden documents released. To date, the administration has made fewer public fewer than 150 documents out of more than a million, despite a statutory requirement to expedite the release of the collection. The administration claims the documents have been translated and exploited. We're skeptical this is the Weekly Standard, and so are our sources. Steve Hayes has been leading the way with Tom Jocelyn on this. Uh, you've been pushing for those documents. You now have had some success. Are we? Are you learning anything from them? Well, we're le we're learning a lot. Uh, but let me first start with that the administration is slow rolling us on the release of those documents. And you know, originally they came out and I think released 16 or 17 documents uh, that created a false narrative about what was actually what what Bin Laden was actually doing. In other so, words, he was more plugged in with a lot of these other groups around the world. Right, but the original documents made it look like he was not. It Alone, made, it made him look winter like in a lion, lion in the a winter. A lion in winter was the famous uh, headline. And what we're finding now is more as more and more of these documents come out, we're finding that that Bin Laden uh, had significant ties to Iran. That uh, Iran was a tunnel uh, for Al Qaeda. Uh, bin Laden told uh, his followers not to attack the Iranians. And I think as we begin to comb through more of these documents and they become, they become released to the public for historians to, to look at, uh, we're going to learn a lot more about Bin Laden and it's not going to be what was presented by the administration. Well, that is fascinating about Iran. I mean, there were some indications and suggestions. Um, but what you're saying is that Iran and Al Qaeda had some kind of symbiotic relationship. Well, we, we already know that from just the few documents the that have been that have been released. At but least do you think Iran public. had any tie to the 9/11 attacks? Well, this gets into another subject. So, at the same time, we have an investigation 
at the House Intelligence Committee that's been going on for a long time, and we've been trying to gather as many of these documents and reports as possible. Uh, we finally were able to receive these reports, or some of the reports. What we're now finding out is that we are still short many of the reports that we need to actually do a full assessment. So I remain concerned that, that there was intelligence work done uh, down at CENTCOM uh, that the taxpayers paid for and that our military intelligence professionals went through and spent a lot of time on that we do not have still at the House Intelligence Committee and those products were never put into finished intelligence products. Is your guess as to why that happened, one about the terrorist connections, that the administration wanted to downplay the role of al-Qaeda and the significance of the terrorist threat, and then two about Iran, that obviously this administration wanted to get an Iran nuclear deal uh, passed. Is that your suggestion? So look, it would be, that would be speculation. Uh, but what I can, but I, what I can tell you is, is that uh, in, in this town, when the administration won't give you something that you have the constitutional right to have, right? So we have the authority, we have the clearances. All of these files should be transmitted to the House Intelligence Committee, and they're not being given to us. And they're slow rolling the public release of documents also. So if that's happening, why? Why do it? If there's nothing to be afraid of, why not? I mean, we all have clearances. At least give it, if you want to slow roll and not release publicly some, that there may be a reason for that. But you should at least provide them to the House Intelligence Committee uh, so that we can conduct an investigation, and that's not happening. Your hope is that eventually it does? Uh, eventually, we're getting close to subpoenaing the documents. Mr. Chairman, thanks for the time. My pleasure.